The incident took place in 1997. The American military cemetery on Omaha Beach was reached by an elderly guy who was slowly making his way along the road in his family's company. He made a beeline for Captain Miller's grave before falling to the ground and sobbing next to it. Then his thoughts returned to 53 years ago. The day of the Normandy invasion was June 6, 1944. After getting off the ship, Miller started formulating a strategy when they heard shells coming from the coast and realized a fierce battle was going to break out. The soldiers on board the ship began praying right away in their respective ways. The opposing soldiers on the coast started firing as soon as the hatch door opened. The remaining American soldiers dove into the water to escape the German bullets, which were as dense as rain and killed many of them since they had not yet reacted. As a result of a bomb going off close to his ship, Captain Miller is currently unable to hear anything. When he turned to look at his companions, he discovered that several of them were on fire and that one of them had lost an arm. Locate that arm. After some time, he cooled down at the urging of his subordinates. Miller gave the command to keep going while using the chance to strike the bunkers on the beach because every location along this coast was being fired upon by the Germans. Their plan is weak because they cannot rely on anyone else. After all, the tank that will support the American soldiers has not yet materialized. The soldiers kept running for shelter as they heard a huge explosion. Miller wanted to know where the enemy's attack was coming from. He then pulled out a mirror, a sharp knife, and gum from his colleague's lips to create a reflected mirror. He then successfully pinpointed the enemy's shooting position. This fortification was overrun with two MG-42 machine guns and two mortars, and Miller then went on to defend his friends. Jackson, a sniper, took a firm hold of the cross chain around his neck before taking a precise shot at the opponent's position, praying to God as he did so and killing an enemy. Similar to Miller's unit, other platoons on the beach also descended, 34,000 soldiers made up this wave. The unrelenting march of the American troops won the day in the end. While American troops started to clear the battlefield and the shoreline was piled high with bodies, the Germans were defeated and surrendered, bringing an end to this particular conflict. One of the innumerable American soldiers who lost their lives in combat bore the name Ryan S. on his bag. A staff member is keeping a record of American servicemen who have been killed in action in one of the buildings. Their task is to compose consoling letters for the families of troops who died in combat. After looking through the letters, a woman discovered something incredibly odd right away. Three letters had been addressed to the same address. She swiftly informed her superiors of her discovery. Their mother will get three death notices from her three sons, stating that Sean Ryan passed away in Omaha Beach, Peter Ryan passed away in Israel, and Danny Ryan also passed away in New Guinea. When it is afternoon, the fact that four Ryan brothers were fighting, including the youngest, gave them one final shred of hope. The location of the youngest of Ryan's brothers is still unknown. It is terrible and unfair that a mother could have to receive notices of three sons' deaths at once. Therefore, Colonel Bryce decided to apply the Sullivan Act, which prohibited allowing all of a family's children to perish on the battlefield. He also explained the issue to his more senior generals, who gave their blessing. They agree that they must locate the Ryan family's youngest brother so he can go home, and they will task a squad with finding and guiding Private Ryan home. Ryan is currently in a hazardous condition and is also in German-occupied territory, thus, this job must be completed quickly. Captain Miller's team is the one tasked with the primary job. When the mother saw the car carrying the officer and the priest approaching and realized that her son had passed away, she fainted at her home. Captain Miller accepted the mission even though he was aware that it would be challenging because it was a military order, and he then departed. Miller selects eight people to accompany him on his search for Ryan. The soldiers initially questioned the need for an entire squad to look for a single individual. Miller instructed the group to press on with the trip. The group traveled to an unknown French town, where a small number of American soldiers joined a small number of German soldiers who were engaged in combat. A French couple is pleading with Miller's team to save their family so they may take their daughter out of the conflict area. Private Carpazzo climbed up the debris and went up to pick up the young child, despite the majority of the crew being against it. Because this young girl reminded him of his niece, he gave her his cross necklace. After Miller scooped up the child, a gunshot rang out once more, this time hitting Carpazzo in the chest. Carpazzo knew he couldn't hold up for much longer, so he took the letter in. He stepped outside and requested his friends give the letter to his father since he was still concerned that his blood might be on it. The German was soon discovered lurking nearby, and Sniper Jackson shot him to death. Carpazzo passed away, too. Instead of traveling with Miller, the other girl sobbed and returned to her family. While looking for a spot to rest, the brothers in Miller's squad accidentally dislodged a log, 
which caused the wall to crumble and reveal German men making ammo behind it. The two sides then started to hold their ground while requesting each other's surrender. However, the situation ultimately came to a head when a second squad of American soldiers opened fire, killing every German. Private Ryan, for whom Miller had been searching all day, was a member of that squad. When Miller first met Private Ryan, he progressively revealed that his siblings had died. Ryan sobbed for a long time, and Miller felt sympathy in his heart for him. The conclusion of the mission brought a sigh of relief to Miller's squadron as well. When Ryan asks Miller how his siblings passed away, Miller responds that they did so valiantly. Since they are still in high school, Ryan claimed that it was impossible. Miller and the team recognized they had the wrong individual at this point. They had just located the incorrect person who had the same name and job. Miller's squad had to search across the fighting zone and approach other squads to get Ryan's information. When the squad came to a stop that evening, the brothers got to talking and discussed what they wanted for when they went back to their homes. The following day, Miller's unit proceeded to the parachute gathering spot to inquire about Ryan, look for fallen soldiers, or look for cards of the deceased to determine whether Ryan was alive or dead. Miller spoke aloud in front of the crowd, does anyone have any information regarding Ryan, feeling that there was no information available. After a brief exchange, Miller discovered that Mike, a soldier who had a hearing impairment and was damaged in one ear, had information about Ryan that the colonel had gathered from the soldiers. Ryan was a soldier who was dispersed throughout the army. They identify Ryan on the map, which is a town and a crucial stronghold that the adversary will assault. Even though finding Ryan is a challenging undertaking, Miller's team keeps searching for him. As they made their way across a desolate terrain, Ryan's unit continued to engage the enemy. After some time of battling, they finally succeeded in freeing a German soldier thanks to Upton's compassion, but in exchange, Wade gave his life. Because of one person named Ryan, the team started to create suspicion and unhappiness over the decision to sacrifice two members. They were worn out from the stress of the battlefield, the grief and rage, and the hardships. Miller found a quiet place to grieve, he was also very sad, but he did not want anybody on the team to know out of concern that they would lose them. Spirit Miller's real sharing persuaded Rybin to stay and finish the task, even if he too wanted to abandon it. They engaged the Germans in combat once more, and this time, thanks to excellent teamwork, they promptly eliminated every single German soldier. Another American army unit also assisted them in their victory. The unmistakable James Francis Ryan reappeared as the two squads walked over to say hello. After all of the struggles and giving up that Miller's team had to do, the Ryan they were waiting for had finally shown up. Miller approached Ryan for a conversation as the two platoons arrived back in the town where the Germans were planning to launch their assault. When Ryan questioned what had happened, Miller answered, Your brother died, and who is it, after pausing for a time? All of them? Ryan inquired. Ryan was speechless and at a loss for words. Right now, his emotions are very conflicted. Miller said to Ryan, We're here on a mission to bring you back. Ryan considered his townmates facing and battling the Germans as he slowly came to throughout this time. He assured everyone he wouldn't depart while still engaging in combat. Ryben became enraged at this point and claimed that it was his fault that two of their fellow soldiers had perished. Ryan offered his condolences and asked for his name, pledging to engrave the names of the two people who gave their lives for him. Ryan, though, was convinced that he should remain since he felt he lacked the authority to do so. He wanted to continue fighting alongside his friends because they had given just as much effort and sacrifice as he had. And even if I make sacrifices, I believe my mother will still be understanding. As a result, Miller's team understood that Ryan could not be persuaded to go back, rather, they just needed to stay to battle and finish the job at hand so that they could go back with Ryan at his whim. At this point, Miller revised his strategy, collaborated with his teammates to create a plan, identified the munitions at their disposal, and assigned specific roles to each member of the squad. The tower is under someone's control, traps are prepared by someone else, ammo is moved back and forth during combat, and the bridge will be destroyed by someone else when the enemy passes. Everyone took a brief moment to unwind and recuperate after completing their tasks before returning to combat. Upon his return, Miller told Ryan about his aspirations and desires. Jackson noticed the enemy's approach with two tanks and fifty hostile soldiers a short while later while he was on the tower. A brutal conflict is about to break out. Early on, the team's raiding and trapping strategies were quite successful, rendering the target army ineffective. They are momentarily held by Battalion Miller and Ryan. However, the Germans eventually started to launch numerous, ferocious counterattacks. After killing numerous enemy soldiers while perched atop the sniper tower, 
Jackson was eventually spotted by enemy tanks, who then detonated the tower. Dead is Jackson. Other Miller's ambush places were gradually found and destroyed as well. When his friends are fighting and about to die, up them, a private on the team who is in charge of logistics, is unable to intervene and protect his teammates. The other adversary also noticed Upthem in danger, so he did not kill him but instead fought stealthily. In the home where his teammates died upstairs, Upthem just sat and sobbed. Lieutenant Miller's situation was not much better. After attempting to blow up the bridge, he was now hurt and weary. With his final breaths, he required a shotgun to fire shots at the German tank. As time went on, their containment strategy failed. Unexpectedly, there was a loud explosion, and that tank was demolished. An American army bomber is seen in the sky, it has arrived just in time to join the fight. The circumstances changed, compelling the Germans to give up. After sobbing for some time, Upton was ashamed of himself and resolved to stand up and fight. He snuck behind the enemy soldiers in the last moments of the battle and raised his gun to order them to give up. After realizing that the soldier he earlier freed is still alive, Upton decides that this is a treacherous opportunity and shoots him, forcing the other soldiers to submit. The conflict is over. In his final words to Ryan, Ryan suggested that he should live a full life. I always remember what you said, and I try to live my life to the fullest, Ryan says as he sits next to Miller's grave after the flashback is done and he is old. Thank you for watching our videos, subscribe for more videos like this, and turn on the notification so you don't miss when we share on the channel. See you in the next one.